Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. That's right, we've got more custom cards to review from the Dawn Guard set, gracefully blessed to us by the mighty Hazash, who has made this wonderful set, which just makes us think, why can't it be in the game? That's right, because the game's been discontinued for a few years. But still, no, honestly, this these sets have been really good fun to go through and see like some very cool ideas of cards, and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next. Um, so today we'll be going through some more vampire cards, and as we know from the first set that we looked at, vampire cards usually fall down into House Telvani's attributes. So that's intelligence, agility, and endurance. And we didn't really see too much of agility, I believe, the first time. Because we saw a lot of um, intelligence and endurance, as you can tell by Harkon alone. But we were kind of lacking on the agility side, so it'd be very nice to see what they can now bring to the table. So this first bit is mainly just a run over of basically what the set is. The, the link to this will be in the description of the video, don't worry. Um, so as you'll see here, this is basically just saying that these are some more of the vampire cards that work with Nightfall and hints that we might have a Falma, Falma, how, however you're meant to say it, I'll have to look it up in between videos. Um, <laughs> there might be a future set with Falma cards in, I say might be, there is, there is, you can go look at it now if you want to, I'm just reviewing them by my time, but you're obviously free to rush ahead, because I'm only doing two of these a week. Um, and here was the basic way of how Nightfall works, about how Nightfall, when it's just played, when it's not night, will last for one turn, etc, simple maths of it. And that's a two-sided mechanic. And then if your opponent triggers, it'll extend for both players. Yada, yada, yada. If you want to know this in more detail, I mentioned it in the first video, which you can go back to watch. But let's get on with reviewing the new cards that we can see today. Oh, excuse me. So the first one we have is the Daughter of Cold Harbor. A five cost, three power, one health, Nord plus vampire. With prophecy and ward. And when summoned, will cause Nightfall 2. And as they've mentioned here, this is meant to represent Sorona's mother, Valasira. Is that how you meant to say her name? I'm probably saying... I, pro I say everything wrong, but at this point it becomes a trend. Um, but I think what here you can see it's meant to do is it's a good card for turning the tide. Um, and as they've mentioned here, it's also nice for arena decks running Nightfall. Because it's got the prophecy ability, and it means that if your opponent smashes one of your runes, it can just suddenly come down. And the stats might not seem too great, but the fact that it's got ward means that it can just punch one unit out like that. As well as also, you know, getting it for free with prophecy. Or if you don't, it makes sense for the five cost. And the fact that it's giving Nightfall 2 means that even if it plays on your opponent's turn through prophecy, or you just play it on your turn you get that kind of benefit either way for your next turn, or your turn. You'll have one turn at least of joy from this card alone. And I think it's very nice to see the stats are very much, they make sense for what it is, because it being a prophecy and having ward especially, do make these stats need to be dropped down, hence why we've got three and one. And five cost is a good number for this, especially as this is just a common. And as I've mentioned, it's good for arena decks. So yeah, I think it's a nice card. Next, we get to see the beginning of Agility appearing with these Vampire cards, and we see it as an Action card, which is a one-cost card called Vampiric Drain, and it works quite like... Oh, what's the Telvani card called? It's like Death Scythe or something. They've recently added it, it was of the final cards they added to the game, which also is a one-cost Drain card, which deals damage. And it also works similar to the um, Invade. It's like Blast... It's, ah, uh, it's the, this is the thing. In my head, I can imagine them, but I don't know the names of the cards. But yeah, what it does is it activates Nightfall, then you deal damage equal to the night's duration to an enemy creature. So, if it's currently Night 3 and you play this, you'll deal 4 damage. But realistically, this card can be used any time of the game, as it's a 1 cost. So, you could use it first turn if you're just trying to pluck something of 1 health off the board. Or you could just be using it later down the line as big removal if you've got a lot of night going. Or just to get night back. It's it's very versatile and that's what I like about it. And the fact that it's got drain as well means that you're looking after your health as well as, you know, your plays. Because sometimes in games you will have it where 
your opponent just draws really quickly and you can't keep up so you do need to like play it on the back foot and drain's always such a key mechanic to just help you stay in the game a bit longer and yeah obviously that's what vampires do they drain life so it's nice to see the thematic side of it working as well anyway next we have the bloodstone chalice from again the door guard dlc what i say from um <laughs> the bloodstone chalice if you don't know is a artifact that a few of harkon's minions ask you to go reclaim and it gets a bit messy but it's 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 vampire stuff in it <laughs> it's a four cost support here which when summoned will apply nightfall so that's for one extra turn and at night your vampires will cost one less but if Nightfall is or Night isn't on the board, your vampires can't gain cover. Which, again, I think what this set does really well and is very impressive is that there's actually a really nice theme behind all the cards as well as quite nice effects. So not only are you getting effects that are logical, but you're getting ones that make sense. Because the fact that Night's not there means that the vampires would be having, quote-unquote, the sun on them. And because of that, it means that their vampiric side isn't able to fully thrive. They aren't able just to go mad with their powers because the sun is draining them. And let's have a read of what he said about here. He said about how it's good for what is it? Is it mostly like catch up was what I believe I read last time. It's, uh, and it plays the trade. It is nice to see that there is, yeah, like a trade off as well because, like we said, that's what vampires have. They can't do much during the day but during the night that's when they can go crazy and yeah it's a good point that a lot of the vampire cards can be quite expensive so it is nice to have this is like good to catch up and yeah having this like this makes it really good and having it go the other way around would be very aggravating so just having it so they don't have that buff of cover is interesting something i will mention now because i have been speaking to hazash the creator of this set is that he's considering implementing cover into nightfall itself um he's discussed with me a few ways that this could be done i think the one that he was most keen about was whenever it was applied was it whenever it was i've, I've just got the message on my phone i'm trying to look them up so Basically, with Nightfall, he wanted it to be that when it's activated, all vampires will get cover, or even all cars will get cover. Or, no, no, the other option was changing the field lane to the shadow lane while it's night. And this hasn't been confirmed yet. This hasn't been something that he's full on gone yes with. But you guys, I'd like to know in the comments from as many of you as possible with this, with this night mechanic. Do you think it is a good idea or a bad idea for it to change the field lane to a second shadow lane while it is active? Yes or no? Or would you rather it works some other way? So, for instance, when night is activated for the first time. So when there's no night and it first hits night, all your units get cover or all units get cover. Or how would you think cover could be implemented into Nightfall itself? just as like an additional effect because currently decks that play nightfall if they don't have the cards that directly work with it they might just do nothing so vampires already in the game basically uh i'd love to know your thoughts in the comments i'm sure hazash would appreciate it as well anyway moving on we have the undercroft sentinel a four cost four five with breakthrough and regenerate and is permanently shackled unless it's night uh, yeah, this is a really cool card. I think that the keywords work quite well together. The fact that it's got breakthrough for damage and it's got regenerate so you can stay on the board a bit longer. It's quite a good killer. And the fact that it only works during night really verifies the fact that it is quite cheap for the keywords it has and the stat lineup it does have. Um, as they mentioned, it originally had a 5-5 stat line, but then became too similar to Bleak Coast Troll, which is obviously quite quite a nice card that a lot of people like to run so this card i think yeah it's a very nice addition to the set and once again fits the theme very well because gargoyles are pretty much petrified until 
bam, they just snap out, start going, and then, you know, start throwing their hands at people. Um, but sounding less like they're vomiting and more intimidating. Like, literally, I didn't know why I tried to sound intimidating there. I put the timid in intimidation. But anyway, moving on, we have Prowling Ghost Fur. We have a Khajiit card that actually fits really well into how Khajiits play and how vampires play. So, so Khajiit plus vampire, one cost, one, two, and it's an epic, nice little gem there, um, which will have Pilfer Nightfall, and while it's night, its stats go up to three power and health stays at two. This here, I think, is very good because it means that if you've already got Night down, it becomes a very good card to draw into. Otherwise, if you start with it in your hand, it's a really nice opener just to get Night going because on those first couple of turns, it means if your opponent doesn't have their low-cost removal or their low-cost guards, you can get off some easy Night and start popping away with your turns. So yeah, Prowling Ghost for a very cool card. And finally, we have everyone's favourite baby girl. That's such a weird way of saying it. We have everyone's favourite vampire in a hopefully a platonic way from Skyrim. We have Serana. <laughs> and she is a 4 cost 3 for Nord plus Vampire who gains power equal to night's duration. So it starts at 3 and it can go up to, well, whatever. It could, in theory, go up to a billion. But that's, that's not going to happen, let's be real. Um, when, well... Your cards with cost less than Serana's power have Prophecy. Now, when I first read this, I thought this could cause problems. Especially if you get, like, late game Knight 6. It's, it's less than even, sorry. Knight 7. <laughs> Knight 7, which is incredibly unlikely. Let's, let's be real, that's a lot of Knight. That's, that means you're pumping it out full freaking speed. Um, so realistically, this will just be your cheap cards of prophecy, meaning you'll get a lot more prophecies, which is obviously very good and very helpful. But even if you did get a ridiculously high number of knight and can get your biggest cards as prophecies, the thing you need to remember, you have five runes. And even though her power or her cost even is four, so you can get her down quite quickly, realistically... This means that this will be a card that you'll want to target your removal for. Diverting your opponent from hitting your face to this card. And giving the risk of, if you want to hit my face, sure. But look, Knight's been down for a few turns. Meaning any card that I draw, which is 4 cost or less, for instance. Or 6 cost or less. Will just come out to the board. So it really makes your opponent risk hitting face. And I think that's actually really nice to have. Because as this card doesn't have guard either, it's something which means that they'll have to actually properly focus on. As well as how cover can play into this archetype. I've just read here. Oh, Favourite undead waifu. Yeah, there you go. See, this DLC first came out um, about, a, about, oh my god, about 10 years ago. Literally, this video's coming out very last minute on the 25th of June. Dawnguard released... 10 years ago on the 26th of June. Jesus. I was I was 10 years old. Mate, I was barely penetrating double digits while people were wanting to try and penetrate some pixels. What is... Go oh my goodness, that's, that's hit me. How was Dawnguard nearly 10 years ago? Well, it is 10 years ago now. Freaking hell. Anyway, as we say, yeah. Her power level is basically controlled by her mid-game stat line and conditional nature of the effect. But it's a very good mechanic, and it does also link into the Elder Scrolls, you know, giving you foresight. So, Saron as a whole is a really good card that fits in with all of these. And, as you can see, there will be other cards which can buff Serana, which means that you can... Oh, that's too far. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Um... <laughs> Yeah, that can obviously buff her, or just items to get her power up, meaning that your big cards can become prophecies. But at that time, your opponent shouldn't be smacking you in the face constantly. They should be targeting this unit. But yeah, um, in review, I think that these cards add really well to the set that we already got originally. 
and give some very promising ideas to what Nightfall can do for the game. Um, but yeah, this will end the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Apologies for uploading it. It'll be like 10, 10.30 UK time when it comes out. But I think most of you guys are American anyway, so that's like your afternoon. I'm sure you're not fussed. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, we will have another review tomorrow of, I think it's more Dawn Guard cards, like the faction Dawn Guard. But yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.